morning, good day, good afternoon from wherever you are joining us in the world. Welcome you is Smangele Msweli from the Global Youth Biodiversity Network who will be moderating this session today. Now this session is a collaboration between the Global Youth Biodiversity Network and the Youth in Landscapes Initiative. Given as Global Youth Biodiversity Network is usually known, is the official youth constituency for the CBD and a network that is representing 1.2 million young people. This is inclusive of individual members, organization members, and Gibdin chapters in the different countries. Uh, we will be here today to explore the concepts of transformative change for biodiversity, as well as understand the role of youth in realizing it. I would like to invite you all to add your questions in the chat, since we will have time to address some of them towards the end of the conversation. Now we've heard the buzzword transformative change. What does it mean? Uh, in some documents, it has been reflected uh, as a change that means not just doing things a little bit differently, not more or less different, but major different. It does include some of the activities that we're already doing, but it means strategic change in our actions, values, and policies. It means deeper and widespread change on a business level, decision-making level, legal, and financial level. In a nutshell, this change can be both on an individual decision making and on political decisions and discourses, as well as legal changes. But I'm not going to explore and define all in all because we have panelists to go deeper uh, with that. Now, we really want to hear from you. What does transformative change mean to you? Hashtag GLF Biodiversity Code, go on youth and let us know what transformative change means to you. Now, as mentioned earlier, I am not exploring this uh, complex topic alone, but with panelists. On the panel, we have so Sefa Tawul, an indigenous woman from the Philippines and currently serving as indigenous youth representative in the steering committee of Gibbon. We also have Sweta from India, who is a young woman who is the global south focal point of Gibbon. They are hoping to spark an interest from all of you towards transformative change. But before we start the discussion and before they do that, I would love to take you on a tour around the world where we invite some of our Gibbon members in different countries and continents to explain deeper to us what does transformative change mean to them. Thank you. I do invite my co-host to share the video. As we are waiting for it, I hope you are on Slido already and have started putting in some of your text on what uh, biodiversity Transformational change is to me when we rewire our societies, our cities, our legal what frameworks, our economic change, systems, uh, and other political you. instruments uh, us, into a new mechanic. society um, of where starting, unsustainable um, practices are no longer allowed or economically feasible. That will also ensure that my consumption or my activities no longer contribute to irrevocable damage and destruction of our shared nature. By tackling inequality, which is an inevitable product of our capitalistic system, then we'll be able to truly solve the biodiversity and climate crisis. If we have the right values, naturally our economic system, our institutions, the way we consume, the way we produce, the way we engage in politics, will naturally follow a more sustainable path 
that's within planetary boundaries. Transformational change uh, must mean that uh, the global society uh, should redirect itself uh, toward a more uh, sustainable future, one that moves uh, intergenerational equity and environmental sustainability uh, to the top of the political agenda and to the core of personal and societal belief systems. For me, a young Latina woman, the transformational change that is required to live in harmony with nature implies that as societies, we move into a new value system where life is the priority. And these values need to be materialized in an economic and political system, in an economic uh, system that guarantees the internalization of environmental costs and the distribution, the fair distribution of wealth in a political system where people, particularly women and girls, have the power, knowledge and capacities to decide on their territories. For me, transformational change means aware about the nature and conscious about the decision that we make in our daily lives because we are all connected to the nature. So every single decision, no matter how small it is, will define the future of our nature. So start from now, start from yourself, and spread the word. Hi everyone. Hi. Uh, sorry for that. I think we're having um, an issue with Simangela's internet, uh, which is totally fine. Um, Thank you I'm so really much to the, the colleagues that contributed. Oh, Simangela is back. <laughs> I think Simangela is back. Simangela, if your internet is working, um no i think she dropped off the call so i think i am going to try and lead you through that um if simangele comes back that would be lovely uh hello sweta hello sefa this is irini from the global landscapes forum um until simangele is back i will try to um run you through the session so we just saw a wonderful video from the Glo uh, global youth biodiversity network community all around the world explaining to us what's what transformative change means for youth uh, in their region and what challenges they are facing. And now we're going to dive deeper into this, uh, this uh, notion with uh, Sweta and Sefa. And the first question I have for both of you is, what examples and programs of transformative, um, that, that reflect transformative change you, you can share with us? So let's start with you, Sweta, and then Sefa can go. Thank you. Thanks, Arini. So uh, transformative change, like all my colleagues in the video mentioned, is a way to simultaneously track, uh, track, uh, tackle the direct, indirect drivers of biodiversity loss while simultaneously working on changing values and behaviors that underpin our society. This is a largely a fundamental change in which humans and uh, the relationship between humans and the environment and a little change in our worldview itself. It's looking at hitting and addressing root causes and key areas where we can create actions for transformation. Now, having said that, our society isn't there yet, right? We are not there yet because we are still in uh, working as business as usual. And our current actions are still looking at solving intermediate symptoms rather than the root causes, which will actually create the lasting impact to combat biodiversity. Now, with, with saying this, I can, I can still say that there are a few initiatives and approaches that do exist today, and they have the potential to create this transformational change. People are calling these the seeds of transformation, and if these mature, and un they can unleash transformative change. Like if we recognize the territories and areas of indigenous people and local communities, including intergenerational equity in our, in our uh, constitution, or even transforming our education systems. All these, when recognized and supported, could set us on a path to transformation. To also give you a real life example that I have come across of a seed initiative, there were, there's an organization called Grassroots Econ Economies that actually transformed the way a community works itself. Uh, they created community currency in several slums of Kenya. And by doing this, they were able to reduce the influence of, the, uh, you know, of, of external factors and pressures on the community, increase self-reliance, and also help them invest in not just social and health structures, but also collective natural resource management. Another good example is the work that Gibbon itself is doing, because we are helping young people or empowering them to view biodiversity as a system. 
and to show them how it's interconnected with our social and economic issues. We are helping them reflect on their own actions, but also looking at you know, uh, biodiversity uh, and seeing the way in which they need to see the transformation that, the, uh, that we need in this world and how they should get there. Thank you, uh, Swetha. I would like to also hear from Sefa. Uh, what's your view on that? Yeah. So the example I'm going to give is maybe not exactly an action or a program, but it's more of a worldview. Maybe, like Ashwetha men mentioned, worldview is such an important part of transformative change. And one of the root causes of biodiversity loss is that many people still um, see people in nature as separate or even see humans as dominant over nature. Um, but what gives me a lot of hope um, is that this view of this separation between people and nature, it's, it's not a universal view. And some of the best examples where people really and truly like see themselves and nature as an interdependent whole, um, it can be found among indigenous peoples and local communities. Um, and so speaking from my point of view as an indigenous person and from my own culture, um, maybe I'll give an example among the Kangkanae people in uh, the Philippines. Uh, we have, for example, this word in our language, uh, the, word, the word is ili, and this captures actually the community, the people who are from there, the environment, um, and even the values that someone has to each other in the ili and to the that uh, illustrates um, how much indigenous peoples have such a deep interconnection to nature. And this is the case for many indigenous peoples all around the world. Now, if this worldview of connectedness, right? And if these practices of valuing um, the land that has kept us alive for generations and generations, if these values are somehow unleashed, I guess, into the whole of society and nurtured, you know, in the generations that, that are to come, um, I really believe that this would be transformative. Thank you. So you taught me a new word today. Uh, this is a lovely one. Is it Ili? Do I say it correctly? Okay, this is lovely. I want to learn more about it. And also it was great like to also hear from Swetha about those ideas that, and, and you of course, like those ideas and values that they have to be embedded in our everyday culture. They have to be part of our constitution. I heard you Swetha saying, which I find super, super interesting. Now, before moving on to the next question, I would like to um, ask Katya to share the Slido. I think we asked the audience at the beginning to send their responses on what does transformational change mean to you. If we didn't, um, I'm asking you to do it now while you're reflecting on um, the on, on, on the session and, and our wonderful speakers. So maybe you can share the Slido a little bit later when more people will have answer to that. And we can move on with uh, our next question, because I really want to explore this transformative change more. So what is the main challenge? Like the question that comes to my head is what is the main challenge to achieve this holistic transformative change? Because it's great. You spoke of, of values, you spoke of culture, you spoke a lot of all these like wonderful ways to see the world and the connection between humans and nature. But what are the, the main challenges you have seen in your advocacy, in your work, in um, applying transformative change and achieving transformative change uh, for biodiversity crisis. And Sefa, I would like to start with you this time. Yeah, so that's a great question. And um, one of the main challenges, I think, um, like because of the nature of transformative change, the many people who have vested, vested interests in our current systems, our current systems which are unfair, I guess, and unsustainable, they will definitely oppose transformative change. And this is something that's very clearly stated even in like global assessments, like the IPBES global assessment, which you might have already heard of, which has reported that like more than 1 million species are already at risk of extinction. So the system is the way that it is because certain people continue to benefit um, from keeping it that way, right? And who are these people? I think um, many of our current world leaders, many corporations, businesses, and maybe even like big organizations, um, they have the power and the resources to change things, but because they benefit from the status quo, um, many of them simply, they, they won't, right? And they may even like oppose transformative change in a way that's not very obvious. Like they might say the right things, they might uh, be making the right promises, right? And, but they don't really reflect this in the way that they act. And this is really frustrating. Um, and it might 
this this thing might sound like a huge huge uh, hurdle because of how much power they have compared to i mean like and resources they have but we need to be able to um, overcome this opposition because we, we don't have a choice it's the only way that we can live in harmony with nature and it's important to remember i guess that transformative change is not going to be easy and it's not gonna happen spontaneously it's gonna really require a lot of intense effort from everyone um but it really is i guess our only shot at getting out of the crisis we're in and maybe just to provide like a way forward uh, we need to start holding our leaders and people in power accountable um and we need to flip i guess where the where the power is um and support the self strengthening of of us of the people on the ground um who hold you know the key to a better future like we as youth as women as indigenous peoples and local communities we have the we have a, we need to have a strong voice in the decisions that affect us so i'll stop there Wow, this is this is definitely a very very bold and packed statement. I I have so many questions and so many thoughts, but I would really like to hear from Sweta before <laughs> expressing what I'm thinking. Thank you. Thanks, Irene. So when I actually think about like what are the barriers, I kind of see it as from three different kinds of people. First, I see it uh, as people who don't really understand what transformative change is and why it's important. And for such people, I think educating them and creating that awareness is the first step, helping them understand it, helping them change the values and then gain traction on why we need transformative change could be the approach for them and showing them that transformative change can truly really be incorporated in every single thing that they do and help them believe in it. Now, the second group of people are the non-believers, are the people who think it's too far-fetched because they do understand what it is but they don't believe it is going to work. And for this kind of people, I think the way we could approach them is actually to talk to the first group of people who we have already educated and empowered to go and demonstrate and convince to these people that this is a, this is this can happen and kind of help them mature those seeds that I mentioned earlier, help mature some of these seeds for transformative change and sh show them that this uh, can happen and there is value and impact in transformative change. Now, the third group of people, as Sefa mentioned, are kind of the one of the most challenging people to work with because these are the people who are benefiting from business as usual. And they understand what transformative change is, but they do not want to act on it because they're personally benefiting from the status quo. So these people, some of the points that Sefa mentioned are definitely ways we need to push for them. But through looking at my own grand agenda, I guess uh, using the both the first and the second groups of people to help convince this third group of people through social pressures as well as changing policy level decisions could be the approach to really pushing this last group of people over you know to our side in a way now if you can see my uh, my grand scheme of plan of all the people and how to address them you see that education is kind of a very crucial part in my whole plan and it is what we need to really push for this massive change and that is one of the main reasons we as young people are pushing for transformative education as a part of the post 2020 global biodiversity framework that we are negotiating next year and to help them uh, help countries understand the importance of transformative education in addressing biodiversity loss and maybe even potentially push our governments to change the formal education system itself Okay, thank you, thank you. Well, I mean, uh, Sefa and Swefa, both of you, you raised so many things. For me, what really stand out is from Sefa's part when she said that she really, um, she really mentioned these power imbalances that we all use people understand that are basically ruling our world right now. And I actually found hope in what Sefa said, actually, that we, as, as youth, as women, as indigenous people, as communities, we can actually find strength and power in each other in order to, from the ground, build from the ground up and address those changes in the in the upper level that Sweta was uh, was mentioning, like the policy, uh, the policy arena, the negotiations, and all of those things. And what I found wonderful in your message about the challenges is that you are indeed being very proactive and constructive about it. So Sweta, you mentioned transformative amazing such an interesting um an interesting 
safe space to go back at how we can educate people into into understanding what transformative change is so I would like to learn more about that. And I would like to ask you, Swetha, to maybe walk us through what do you mean, Keisha? So, uh, so I think the first thing we need to do is acknowledge that education can be a very powerful tool in shaping people's minds. I mean, most of us here right now in GLF, including me, were taught sometime in the past about the importance of biodiversity, why we need to conserve it and sustainably use it. And that kind of inspired us and made us come together here to learn more and also act together. Now, transformative change is some uh, transformative education is something that kind of goes beyond this, trying to also incorporate changes in values and behaviors that exist today. And the way we could do this and kind of operationalize it is through actually teaching children to look at themselves as a part of nature and not separate from it. Kind of trying to create educational methods that promote this connection with nature and culture and how they play a vital role in our, in our society and help them, you know, maybe by visiting na uh, natural reserves, helping them celebrate that connection between nature and culture. These are some of the things that could really help, you know, transform the way we educate our, our future generations and the current one. Also maybe thinking about having curricula that really show that interconnectedness of the world on how biodiversity is not separate from us and it's related to every single thing and every single person on this planet because the reality is no matter who you are, it is necessary for our survival. And we do not have the luxury of our previous generations to exploit it because we are truly at the brink of an eco ecological collapse that is linked to an economic collapse as well. Now, uh, transformative education is also about breaking those silos that exist within our current education courses where everything is taught in like their own bracket. It's like you have educational studies that is its subject and then you have other subjects. Now we need to start showing them that you cannot see edu uh, your environmental studies as something which is different from the others and you kind of need to incorporate social and environmental ag angles into environmental studies and vice versa because unless you show them this interconnection it's not going to happen. The last thing that we really need in our curricula is to help uh, people self-reflect. Ask why you know, help create this generation that can think and reflect on its actions. You know, have a generation that is not going to continue to just look at uh, quick fix solutions and, you know, short term quick so solutions to deep societal problems and really embrace and accept the fact that we are living in a complex world and there are complex issues that we are facing. And we need to focus and work together to create lasting uh, solutions. And I really think uh, education and transformative education could be very powerful in helping us do that. Yeah. Thank you very much, Swetha. And what about you, Sefa? What's your view on transformative education? Yeah, in addition to the great points that Shreta already made, um, another way I think to make transformative education a reality um, is to support and promote intergenerational dialogue and learning, meaning we as youth learning from our elders and also not forgetting that our elders also have something to learn from us, right? And supporting intergenerational learning is also especially important um, for indigenous peoples and local communities because a very serious um, problem that we are facing is the erosion of our traditional knowledge and languages, which are very valuable to continue our role as stewards of much of the world's biodiversity. Um, and so this is not just something, this is not just a problem faced, uh, for indigenous peoples, but also for the whole of society. And relating to this, it can even be as simple as, you know, making sure education is culturally appropriate and it's making sure education is accessible in our local languages and in our mother tongue. Um, speaking just from experience, for example, I went to a school where almost every subject um, was, was taught in English and even sometimes, you know, discouraging the use of the local language. And this is a very colonial approach and it's one of the ways that education can contribute to the, the loss of traditional knowledge and of cultural diversity also. Um, and so we should really take the, step, the steps to address this and to decolonize our current education systems. And finally, just a last point, um, in terms of higher education and research, um, uh, breaking silos there is also very important. Um, I, I'm in graduate school and I study conservation and I guess it just became very apparent to me that um, uh, in many institutions, natural sciences are still kept very far apart from social sciences when um, they should, they, they can solve many problems by really collaborating and working together, so. 
Great, thank you. And also thank you, Setha, for sharing um, your, your challenges. I think this is very insightful because we have many people from, uh, from the audience asking actually, what are the challenges that you face as a young indigenous woman when you are trying to access you know, this education and all of these things? So I think this kind of covers that question. Um, I would like to very quickly go to the slider results because I really wanna hear from the audience uh, and see what they think about transformative, uh, transformative change. Although I think that um, they will go and search like crazy after this session because I know I'm going to do it. I think it's super interesting. So I can see here overthrowing the status quo by nonviolent radical activism. I think this is a very uh, interesting point that I can see it reflects a lot of the things that Sweta said about how we have to be active and how we have to be educated and reflective of our actions. Um, so a change in the world view from anthropocentric to ecocentric that is interesting uh we are nature i really like that equality for human and nature making progress with environment and local communities protected i like the connections that i see the audience making like it's very important for me to see that they are putting nature and humans in the same sentences and they are talking about equality and the connections that are there so Moving on from Slido, we have just three, four minutes left, but I would really like to ask you um, some questions from the audience. Um, so I have a question for Sefa, uh, no, for Sweta, I'm sorry. And maybe you can keep it super, super short, but it's a very interesting question. It says, how do we make sure as youth that the concept of transformative change will not be co-opted by those that are now in power and that benefit from the current status quo. So meaning that this is not going to be a greenwashing marketing strategy. And if you can keep it super short, it would be lovely. That's a very fact question though. <laughs> Could you repeat the first part of the sentence? It got uh, cut. Of course. Uh, so how can we, we as youth make sure that we will stop those people in power from basically owning transformative change and making it a greenwashing strategy. So I think that's, uh, I mean, that's a brilliant question. And yes, that's, there's always a risk that that's going to happen. And I think that's where we need to, as youth, own it before they do. And we need to start creating the narrative in a way of what we mean by transformative change. And this is also why we and uh, in the post-2020 Global Biodiversity Framework are pushing for it from the youth side because we are trying to tell them what do we mean by transformative change and what do we want to achieve from it and how do we want to use education as a method to do it. So these are some of the ways that in which we are trying to own the narrative. And yes, I mean, even after we own it, there are going to be risks of, you know, these people in power trying to transform it. But it is going to be a constant battle, the same way climate change and global warming is a battle for us and how we have to constantly fight these narratives. It is going to be a battle for us. But, you know, we need to do it as the future and we need to push for it and believe in it, I guess. Thank you. Thank you, Sweta, for trying to respond to this very difficult question in such a short time. Um, so before closing the session, I want to acknowledge Simangele, who was supposed to be the moderator of the session. Uh, I'm so sorry for that. It's the internet causes these troubles. We really value Smangala's work and we hope that she would have been able to uh, moderate the session. I hope I attempted to do her justice by fitting in her shoes. Uh, but because I don't want to close this discussion, I would prefer if Sefa would do it for us. So I would like to, you for, to close our, our call today by letting our audience know what actions, like our youth know, what actions can they take to start embracing transformative change and what are some next steps that maybe Given can, can offer to them. Uh, and you have one minute for that, as I can see. And thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, so maybe I can just kind of start to say like it's, it's for transformative change to happen. We also need to be willing to question ourselves and really be willing to have those difficult and uncomfortable uh, conversations that, you know, that really make us question whether, like, what world we want to have and whether this, this the current systems are, you know, what will lead to that. Um, another point is that uh, young people continue to, like, I guess, have anxiety over the future. Um, and it's really scary. Um, but it's, it's, um, we have the power to really change things. And we should not forget the power that uh, lies in collective action of young people. And yeah, I hope that maybe Shweta can also, if there's time, or oh, maybe not, okay. 
Yeah. Yes. I, I think I'll just build on what she said. You know, this is our future. It is scary, but it's our right. It's a right for a safe, clean, and healthy environment, and we need to fight for it. And there's no better time to fight for it than now, with history and with all that's happening across the globe, with the Black Lives Matter and the Gre- Greta's movement. We can do it, you know, and we can really change the way we live and change, you know, stop living in this outdated construct of society from our previous generations and create that fundamental change that we need uh, in our social and economic system and move it to what we believe in. So I would, I would like to end it there. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sefa. Thank you, Swetha. Thank you, Simangala. Um, I am deeply humbled and inspired by both of you. I hope the audience is as well. Uh, let's keep this conversation going. Visit Gibbons' website, see what they're working on. Maybe you want to join them. Maybe you want to contribute in their work. I think, I think this, is, this was a great session. Thank you very much uh, for trusting me to be your moderator <laughs> last minute. Um, and I will speak to you soon. Have a great day. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Irini. Bye.